Here we are back at the big board. Looking at Lingi, 1815, The Last Eagles from Hexasim, a game designed by Walter Vedovsky, the Vedovsky, perhaps, who knows? But uh, just in, beautiful box, great artwork. Looks like the map's gonna be a stunner. Complexity level cracks in at the four to five range. You know, it's all a relative thing, really, who knows? Solitaire suitability, yeah, seven, uh, maybe, you know? I, I think you could certainly play this game by yourself. <laughs> it doesn't come with AI or anything like that. If you're wondering why the table's shaking, it's because I've got a piece of cardboard sitting on dice over another game, because I'm at a room <coughs> in my uh, game room. I'm sorry for the coughing and moaning, because I'm getting over uh, some sort of lurgy. So we've got a little vibration on the camera, so just bear with us here. All right. Uh, <coughs> You can see that, you don't need me to read that, right? Let's have a look. I recently played the Austerlitz battle and I, and I am very excited and hopeful that we will see a continuation of releases that are not tied to the Waterloo campaign that in fact deal with some of the earlier battles in Napoleon's history, because I think that's where, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of the juice is with his gameplay, with uh, his with his uh, his history. Okay, so series rules. Uh, once again, it it's all full color. You know, lots of good examples. Everything's pretty clear. Uh, you are not going to be confused by this set of rules. Uh, for a French translation to English. They are excellent. I will. I will say that we only had a couple of, excuse me, a couple of minor issues that we dealt with uh, pretty quickly. We agreed to work under certain conditions. Uh, fog of war aspects, the card aspects in the game work well. They're not. It's not a card-driven game. It's a card-assisted game. This is obviously a regimental scale system that really. Uh, assumes that the division level commander knows what he's doing. He is choosing the facing of the formation. He is choosing the formation of the formation. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, <clears throat> so you don't have to elect to, to get into a square or anything like that. So this game is allowing you to focus on what are the tactics you're going to use and how are you going to get to where you want to be and how are you going to achieve your goals and objectives and then letting the system play out from there. I think it does give perhaps the firepower system in this game is a little strong. Excuse me, I'll sip some tea and try and uh, soothe my throat here. So anyway, that's the rule book. You've probably all seen that before. You can download these rules online. Then we have the <coughs> specific battle rules, which is just gonna have any scenario specific uh, things we need to know, the virtual conditions for each of the scenarios that are in the game, any variants that may be in them, and then explanations of each of the cards that will be made available. And it looks like there are a total of five scenarios in this particular game. So, you know, you're paying a uh, relatively hefty price for a single battle, but it is a critical one in the Waterloo campaign. Um, the French and the Prussians really get after it in that one. So we've got that. Now you have uh, various charts and bits and pieces. So unit ID chart, two copies of the Malay and uh, combat fire tables there. And then your planning chart. You're going to put your command chits down on this and give each core a, uh, you know, you're gonna put a command chip on this here, for instance, on one of these red dots, and that's gonna be your orders chart for each side. You've got a uh, losses track and a turn track. We'll just put those to one side. And then this is a little scenario set up one thing you'll notice on the map i don't believe there are hex numbers on the maps i don't think they have it on these ones uh nope 
So uh, <coughs> you use this to set up within X number of hexes of these numbers here, set up the cores. Uh, so detailed historians will be able to work out who goes where. They get the exact locations if they wish. The rest of us will just set it up and play the game. Uh, nice scenario. Cards for each scenario. Help you know who goes with what core and everything's color coded. The easy no punch counters that are quite fantastic. I love these counters. They're very colorful and on the map and look very, very pleasant. And they seem to work very well. Lots of lots of nice history goes uh, into these games. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can open up some of these maps. <coughs> some of these are double sided as well, so in fact, here we go. Here's the uh, streets of Lingi. Uh, it's a smaller map. There's nothing on this side, right? So it's just going to be a, a smaller, perhaps a learning scenario, uh, or we're going to do an assault. It's only four turns long. But on the other side. Yeah, I'll flip that over and put that bad boy there. This is a big battle. Nice big two mapper. Um, there's also a smaller map on the back of this one. <coughs> this is the uh, scenario one, the battle for Saint Armand La Haye. Um, and the, the hexes, the hexes are uh, super sized on this. It's really nice. I'll just pull this back so you can have a look at it. So this goes something like that. There. There you go. Beautiful looking. Gorgeous detail. Lovely artwork. Um, you know, the, the three dimensional buildings are very attractive. The windmills. Let's try and zoom in on some of these guys here. Look at that. Very nice. Very nice. Really pleasant. All right. And then of course the cards, which of course already begun to uh, displace out of the uh, little little holders they're in, but there are the cards here that are, you know, decent quality. They're not awesome. They're kind of thin, frankly. They're probably the least attractive aspect of the game, but overall you have fantastic artwork. These are a high gloss map, but the paper does not seem to crack or peel on the edges, which is really nice. The rule book is also high gloss. Not a fan of that, but you're getting a really high quality product and you feel like when you pick the box up from the artwork to the counters and the maps and the rules and the scenario books and the great support online, you're really buying a very, very high quality, very thoughtful product here. I will be excited to continue to buy more of these games, despite the fact that I think that this is a level of abstraction that perhaps not everybody would uh, care to engage in. If you're a La Bataille player, you may find the abstraction uh, a, a little too much. But if you want to sit down and play out a battle in an afternoon or a long, you know, a, a long afternoon or half a day, I think this is one of those games that you can do that with once you get the hang of the rules and how things work. And you can have a thematic Napoleonic experience. And that's really what we're looking for, right? We, we, I don't know that I want to roll for morale for, for, for four different aspects of me about to, to take a shot or uh, advance into Malay, as the case may be. What I want to do is make choices tactically with the formations I have on the board and see if I can outwit my opponent. So anyway... Fantastic, interesting system. It's my one of my top two or three uh, Napoleonic systems out there at this sort of 200 meter per hex scale. So I think it's fantastic. Okay, I think I've sung, sung its praises enough, right? Hey, send the commission check to my house. It's going to be great. All right, guys, talk to you, talk to you soon. Hope you enjoyed the little uh, shrink rip here. Cheers.